We've just recently entered the no movement meta in Fortnite. We don't know if this is gonna last for a long time, but it's here for now. So I decided to make this video where I give you tips for the no movement meta, including best loadouts, how to get refreshes, and how to rotate those far pulls. And I'll be breaking down one of my finals games to help you guys understand a little more. Without further ado, let's hop into it and start off with some general no movement mode tips. First off, something I slept on and I know others did too, slap juice and stuff like that is more valuable now, including that exotic gun that gives you unlimited sprint. It's not game changing, but low key, I'm gonna start carrying slap instead of minis if I have the option. Tip number two is the best loadout to carry for the win is four floppers, a slurp juice, and then one other heal. Either like big pots, or if you're closer to end game, grab some more white heals. The third tip is we're not in heal off meta anymore, so don't be afraid to tank some storm if you need to on your rotates. There were so many times where I either tanked and played floppers or med mist just to look for a refresh when I got low on mats. Tip number four is constant refreshes are a must. Throughout the entire end game, you're probably gonna need around four refreshes unless you get a really lucky big refresh. If you're not very good at getting refreshes, you know, we're gonna go over it in the end game breakdown just a little bit, but some general tips are learn to stay ahead and learn to frag on the go. A really good way to frag on the go is constantly be aware of what's going on around you. If you see somebody get cracked on your rotate, box up next to them and box fight them. One really good thing that I was doing is looking ahead of zone when I box up and try to crack people that are rotating ahead of me. Then push up to them and try to get the refresh. And then the last thing, which I didn't do enough of, look for high ground if you have good mats. Get ahead of the zone and spray back or just build fight them. I personally gotta get back in that habit. For the next part of the video, I'm gonna be breaking down one or two end games, including those long distance half and half zones. I guarantee that a lot of you who struggled, struggled with that zone particularly. Particularly. This was my game two in the finals, and as you can see, the zone is by Brutal, and this zone pulls pretty dang far away. Because the zone's in Brutal, the first thing that crosses my mind is, well, I could use the pad. There were already three people based by the pad, so I waited to make sure that I wasn't gonna get pumped as soon as I go for it. But I noticed two people had already hit the pad and no shots were fired, so I should be safe here. The scary thing about padding is getting shot while you're in the air. So I made sure to follow this guy's flight path in hopes that if he's safe, I'm safe, and if he gets shot at and cracked, they're just gonna focus him and not me. It's still a little bit risky, but I saved so many mats by doing this. The next thing to notice is look at which side of the circle is initially in the zone. It's that backside by Slappy. Noting this is incredibly important, and it's how I get a free rotate in my next zone. Because the Slappy side of the safe zone was initially in the storm, there's really no players over there. So I wanna head to that side of the zone when I'm rotating this max pull. The only player that was behind me ended up rotating past. I just let him go. I want him gone so then I can rotate along that back edge by myself. There was one other player headed in this direction. I just built him off while I went, and then I ran into a guy who was boxed up. I could have just kept on going by past him and probably should have, but I sat here to see what he was gonna do. And he ended up just cutting it straight into the zone. So I was able to go along this whole outer edge and look at how free this rotate was. At this point in the rotate, a lot of people will continue to rotate down towards the water to get to the ulti dead side, but I've noticed the zone never pulls out into the ocean, so I stick on this edge, that way I'm closer to the next zone pull. The biggest key notes for rotating those zones is finding dead side, playing off the players around you, whether it be building them off, shooting at them so they're forced to build, and then you can use their builds as cover, finding old movement around the map, stuff like that is how you do those rotates. But every single rotate is different. Maybe I'll make another one of these videos in the future breaking down more strategies. But heading into this end game, something bad happens. The first moving zone pulls across the water and I'm in the dead center of this zone. So I have people to my left and my right. I literally could not figure out a single way to get out of this. So by the time the zone started pulling, I just had to go for it. My initial plan is start building off to the right side of the zone, so I'm not stuck in the middle, but it just was not happening. What I end up doing is just trying to swim across the water, and it works out. I noticed a lot of times when swimming across a lake or a river, you can swim pretty freely if there's other people swimming. 
but I was following right behind this person. So I go for a quick shot and a quick box fight. I don't want to oversend this player. So when they get out, I just focus on my rotate. I'm still not in a great position because I'm still in the center of the zone. So I have danger all around me. If I go for a sprint rotate straight down the center of the zone, the odds of me getting pumped are extremely high, which is why I'm overbuilding a little bit. Like I end up boxing up here, which wastes more mats, yes, but it gives me a chance to reanalyze my rotate. I really want to get off to a side of the zone and that's when I notice this wall. If I can get over this wall, I will no longer have to build off my left side, which saves a lot of mats, so that's what I choose to do. As it turns out, when I get to this wall, there's nobody on this side of the zone. That is the benefit of getting off to one or the other sides. You can oftentimes get much freer rotates. The next zone pulls back, and just a second ago there was nobody over here, so I look to rotate early before it gets congested. There ends up being a player on this dead side of zone. Nobody else is around right now, so I go for a super quick box fight. He's just standing against my wall, and when they're doing this, they're hoping you make a bad edit. So I just set up an optimal peak, get a health advantage, but he got the ramp over me, and it was time to rotate at this point. If you don't get the kill within like five seconds, you should probably look to get ahead some more, unless you know for a fact you can get this kill before you're on the back edge of zone. So I rotate around the player and I hear some footsteps around me. You always need to be very carefully listening for what's around you just so you don't get pumped repeatedly on your rotates. Your sound awareness is one of the most important things while doing these rotates. So like I said, I heard a lot of stuff around me so I end up basing up here for a bit. And I know that I'm low on mats at this point so I make a little bit of space and I aggressively look for a refresh. Only problem is I couldn't find anything. I only have enough to build one more box, so I get as far ahead of the zone as I possibly can, make that one box, and I'm back to looking for a refresh. The good news is, if I can't find a refresh here, I still have a lot of white heals that I saved from before, so I can play Storm for a bit and hopefully find a refresh that way, as my last resort. Lucky for me though, somebody hops on my wall and I quick surprise edit on him. This is not always a good idea. You typically want to set up peaks or try to get some peace control, but I was full out of mats, it was a last resort, I jumped on him, and I got the kill. At this point, it's so good that I have some white heals because I'm tanking some zone. You may notice that I don't end up grabbing that gold pump. Me personally, I don't even look for weapons when I get a refresh in the storm. I rarely look for weapons at all in endgames, unless I really need it. The priority is first get mats, then get heals that you need, and then get ammo you need, and then weapons. So at this point, I'm pushing into the zone, and I notice this zip line here, and I'm like, it goes in the right direction, let's go ahead and send it. No way somebody is going to be looking at this. It was perfect, I managed to get all the way to the front edge. But I know I did not get that many mats off that refresh, so I make two boxes and immediately start looking to frag again. Somebody got on my wall immediately, I got the kill, went to pick up the mats, but the mats did not go into my inventory fast enough here. Super unfortunate right there, but I wanted to break down this game specifically for those far zone rotates that I showed earlier. If you guys want more videos like this throughout the season, let me know down below. Lots more content on the way, so stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.